So now we're going to implement the 2D rotation in a material. So we'll create a new material and call this Rotate 2D. So we'll open up the material and we're just going to rearrange the windows a bit here. And you can drag the details title tab and dock it so that we get the preview window on the lower left part of the screen. So we'll create a texture sample node and drop that down. And over in the texture selection slot, I'm going to choose from the starter content that we've already downloaded and choose the bush texture that we can test on. So now I'm going to connect the output of the texture to the emissive slot of the material and click on the plane icon in the preview and change to a back viewpoint and a lit mode. And this will give us a nice flat preview for us to work with. The next thing we'll do is we'll just come back over to our canvas. I'm going to create a default texture coordinate node. So type COO, and there it is, and we'll click it to drop it on the canvas and connect it up to our texture sample node. So what we want to do now is we're going to want to recenter our UVs. So we will right click and create a subtract node. And we'll connect that up to the first input. And we'll hold to click on the canvas to create a constant 2D vector node and hook that up to the B slot. And then we'll change the value to 0.5. And then we'll have a look at the UVs which have been recentered. And then we'll connect it up to the texture sample node. So now we want to isolate the U and V components, which are the X and Y from our rotation formula. To do that, create a component mask node by typing COM and dropping that down on the canvas. Then plug the centered UVs into it and we'll uncheck the G checkbox, which leaves the R channel, which is really the U or X that we want by itself. Then we can control C and control V to copy and paste that component mask node. So we can do the same to get the G channel, which is just the V or Y that we're after. We can add some text to the description field from the details panel. So we can see in the editor what the node represents. So the R channel is going to be X and the G channel is going to be Y. Now let's rearrange to make some room. I'm going to create a parameter node to represent our angle input that we want to rotate by. So hold one, click on the canvas and convert this to a parameter and we'll call this angle. Now we will calculate the first part of our formula and we need the cosine of the angle. So create a cosine node. We'll plug our angle into the cosine node and let's give this a description of cosine theta. Next we need the sine of the angle. So create a sine node. Give it a description of sine theta. and connect the angle to it. From our formula, we can see that we need x times cosine theta. So create a multiply node and multiply the x component with the cosine of the angle. Then we need y times sine theta. So again, create a multiply node and multiply the y component with the sine of the angle. I'm just going to add a description to this node so it's clear which part of the formula this node represents, which is x times cosine theta, and the other node which is y times sine theta. Now the last part of this rotated u component is to subtract one from the other. So create a subtract node and plug in the right nodes in the right order to match the formula. This node is now the new x or u component, so I'm just adding that in the description. And now that this whole section represents a major part of the formula, I'm going to wrap all the nodes inside a comment block to make it clear what all these nodes do together. So the next stage is to start doing the same thing, but for the Y, or the V component, that the rest of the formula gives us. So I'll just rearrange the nodes in the graph to give us a bit more room. And I've just realized that we want to reuse the cosine and sine of the angle so I'll just take them out of this comment block so that it's clear that they are happening first and that we're going to reuse them. I'll give this its own comment block with its own text. And now we can move on to the next part, which is the x component times sine theta. So again, let's create a multiply node and multiply the x component with sine theta. And the next part is y times cosine theta, so another multiply node which multiplies the y component with cosine of the angle. This just leaves us to add the two sections together. So to give us the new y or v component, we create an add node and connect them up to the slots. 
I'll just add some descriptions to these nodes for y times cosine theta and for the add node. And finally, wrap up these into their own comments block. I need to do some rearranging here because the next step is going to be getting these new components and turning them into a new 2D vector. There's a simple way to do that, and that is the make float to node. So from the node menu, type make, and it should show up in the list there. And this node is pretty simple. It just takes in two inputs for X and Y and makes a new 2D vector from them. So let's see what this has done. We can plug the result into the texture sample node and we can see that we need to add back the offset that we used to recenter the UVs. So create an add node and connect up the rotated UVs to the first input. And then we can find our original 0.5 offset and plug that into the second input. We can plug in the correct UVs, and this is the final result, which for the moment looks exactly the same. But that's because we have an angle input of zero, so there's no rotation at all. Let's input some non-zero angles, and we can see that the texture is indeed rotating. One little fun and useful thing to do is to plug in a time node, which is a node that keeps increasing in value according to how many seconds have passed. So right-click and create a time node, put that down. And we're going to connect that into our cosine and sine inputs to replace the angle input. And we get a forever rotating texture, which is a bit fast right now. So we can multiply that down a bit with uh, a multiply node. So we can see the rotation a bit easier. We just plug that multiply down node into the cosine and sine inputs. And there we have a slow rotating texture. But that's mainly just for quick debugging purposes. So we'll connect the angle control back to the cosine and sine inputs. In the next video, We'll be taking this rotation functionality and wrapping it up into a material function.